What's up outdoorsman, Greg here, and today we're making a single step AM steel detachable aider. All right guys, splicing AM steel and aiders and DIY stuff like this is nothing new to my channel. Matter of fact, I've done a whole bunch of videos on this. You can go back and look for some more in-depth stuff if you'd like, but today we're making an 18 inch locked Brummel fixed loop am steel aider and i'm going to be putting that on the end of my one sticks now disclaimer here tethered or any of the other climbing stick manufacturers i don't speak for them but i can imagine that uh that they don't recommend doing diy stuff to their climbing sticks just like tethered does not recommend doing diy uh, stuff to their climbing sticks. So I'm not speaking uh, as a representative tethered or any other manufacturer, just as a normal dude, Greg Godfrey, making DIY stuff in his kitchen, as it were. So don't do this at home if you are not a qualified professional. Make sure you do your research, test everything at ground level, and do not take my word for it. Uh, this stuff is dangerous, especially when you get up off the ground. So Make sure you know what you're doing and, um, and be sure that you uh, are using the right materials and the right processes. And I am not an expert, so double check everything that I say in this video and make sure I'm telling you the truth. Disclaimer out of the way, what you're gonna need to make this aider, you're gonna need some am steel. Uh, I'm using quarter inch am steel blue. This is the strongest stuff uh, that you can find and it's totally awesome. You're also gonna need a couple of fids uh, I'm using uh, this one that I got from Amsteel, but more importantly, I'm using this one that I made. I did a whole video on how to make this. It's on my channel. I just released it, I don't know, a little, a little while ago. But this is one that I made, and this is the one that you want to use. So make sure you watch that video first so you can see how to use this fit. It's super important. Then you're going to need uh, something to measure your Amsteel rope with. And finally a good pair of scissors. I use these kitchen shears. They're very sharp, they cut very easily, and that's what you want. Second, let's talk about the math here. You're gonna need 68 inches of Amsteel per aider. That is for a finished length aider of about 18 inches. Now, if you're shorter, or like my buddy Ernie, who says he has the inseam of a beagle, well, you might wanna subtract these numbers just a touch, or if you're tall, then maybe you can add a few inches and get a little bit more out of each aider as you climb. 18 inches is kind of a good round number for most hunters. It's manageable in the uh, late season when you have bulky layers and big boots on and you can still make that step. So I go with 18 inches because I think it works really well for me and I think it'll work really well for you. So the math on that 18 inch aider, you need 68 inches of am steel. The way that breaks down is if you want 18 inches, you obviously need another 18 inches for the second part of your loop. So you need 36 inches for your, for your actual step. I allowed a four inch piece for the gap that happens when you spread that rope apart and attach it to the step on your climbing stick. Then I allowed eight inches for each side of the berry. And then I allowed four inches for each loop and two inches for each side that has to be girth hitched onto the step. So you run that math, uh, 36, four, eight and eight, four and four, two and two, and you come out with 68 inches. And when you do that, you are left with a perfect 18 inch aider from here to here. Once you've got your 68 inch piece of material, what we're gonna do is essentially make two what's called locked brummels, okay, on both ends. And they're gonna end up, it's gonna end up looking something like this with this tag end here. This is your tag end. This is about eight, this should be about eight inches. Now there's there's some math here, and what I would recommend you guys do is go and look up what the what the professional splicing guides and the professionals say as far as how much you should have buried. It's all based on the diameter of this rope. So you can actually get a few different answers depending on the, the use, utility of your rope and uh, who, you know, what resource you're looking at. I'm using an eight inch berry. You, I've seen it as high as 11 or 12 inches and I've seen it as low as around six. So I've used eight quite a bit and it seems to hold perfectly fine for me. But again, I'm not an expert. So make sure you do your research and you check. I use eight inches, works for me. So the first thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to measure out that 8 inches. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit more for making my loops for that, uh, that loop allowance that we talked about. So I'm going to come down here to about 10. So I've got my 10 inch piece of material right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab back at the 8 so I know exactly where it is. And then I have the, the 10 inch piece here. So I've got to pass this through itself. I've got, we'll call this, this is the tag end and this is your main line, okay? So I've got to make sure when I pass this tag end through the main line that I pass it through and there's still eight inches sticking back out. That's where that two inch loop allowance comes from, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got my eight inches right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball about where I want it and it's about right here, which is about your two inches. So that's pretty close. And then the first thing that I'm gonna do is just go ahead and fluff that up just like so. Just fluff it up and you can pass your fid through here. You can do all of this with one fid and if you're only gonna use one fid, use this one. It's way easier uh, to do your berries. For passing it through the main line, it's pretty simple to just you know, use this one. So. Basically, you just you pass your fid through the main line. You got your tag in here, and I'm just going to pass that all the way through by grabbing it and putting it in here. Put it in here like so. Pass it through. You're done with your fid. You see that? You've got your tag in going through your main line. And now, that's about 8 inches. Okay? So I've got my loop. I'm going to do a second measurement just to make sure. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just getting round numbers here or just, you know, nearabouts. So that, that gives me that perfect loop allowance right about there with my 8 inches. Now, what you have to do is you have to, in order to lock this, you have to now pass the main end back through the tag and it locks it in to where it cannot come undone. So I'm going to squeeze that loop in a little bit. I'm going to fluff up that point right there on my tag in, right at the top of that 8 inch tag in. You can double check as much as you want. Fluff up that tag in and then come through, pass my fit through again. This time passing the main, main lined end of my rope through the tag in. You're going to see what that looks like. It kind of makes like a little figure 8. I should have done that the other way actually. Let me redo this. I'm talking too much. I passed it through the wrong way. Pull all that through, and this is what you end up looking like. Okay? So you end up looking like a, like a little figure eight kind of thing. Right? You've got your loop. And that terminates right there at the end of that eight inch. And then when you pull this all the way through, it makes like a figure eight in there, in your line. And that's locked now. That is not coming out. It is locked to itself. That is called a locked Brummel. The last thing to do is you have to bury that tag end. Make sure, yep, still eight inches. You gotta bury that eight inches throughout the main line of the, of the aider. And to do that, first thing you wanna do is you wanna taper, taper your rope out. If not, what happens is about eight inches down, you'll have this, this wide spot kind of it's like an abrupt angle where this this tag end is filled is fed through the main line and it'll it'll be you know twice the diameter and then pop down to the quarter inch so what you want to do is just taper this the way I do it it's not rocket science is I just take my fid and I come back here about I don't know two and a half three inches down and I pull two two lines one strand, this is a 12 strand rope, so this is actually the way that Samson recommends you do it. So just pull a couple, 
So there's one, two. So I've got my two right there that I pulled out. Then I'm going to come up about halfway from that, and I'm going to pull two more. There's one. Oops, I've got a fiber there. There's two. So now I've got two of those out or four of those out total, and then I'm gonna grab one more right up here towards the top. Doesn't matter which one, I'm just gonna grab one. So that is, it's a nice, what that does is taper 12 strands down, one, two, three, four, five strands out. Grab your scissors. This stuff is hard to cut, so you gotta, you need to have really sharp scissors. And I'm just gonna cut those. One, two, Jeez, cut that. Then I'm gonna cut this last one. So I cut a total of five strands. Man, this stuff has dulled my scissors. <clears throat> That's what it looks like after you've cut everything. So just smooth that out. Okay, now you've made your locked Brummel. You've got it locked here. This loop can't go anywhere. And you've got, you have now tapered your tag in or your berry that's gonna go all the way back down through here. So the way you do the berry, this is the hardest part of the whole project. You just measure where the berry's gonna end. So right there. Then you come down a couple inches past that because as you feed this berry down through your main line, your main line is going to expand. So it's going to be uh, shorter than it was when you started. So I come down a couple inches past that and I just fluff that up to give myself a reference point for where my fid needs to go in, right? So you can see that it's all fluffed up. It's easy to identify. Then what you do is you come back with your fid. This is the, you're going to see why this one is so important. Then wherever your berry your tag in comes out on top of the main line, right where your locked Brummel ends. You just fluff that up too. Fluff that up and give yourself a nice entry point for your fid. Get your fit in there. Do it this way since I'm right handed. Get your fit in there and then you just feed it all the way down through your through the uh, through the center of the am steel. Okay, you're just feeding it through. This is really easy. This is not, this takes no effort. If it's, if it's getting hung up, you're doing it wrong. And once you get there to where you're, where you fluffed it up a moment ago, you just poke your fit out. And you run your fit down. Okay, so now as you can see, my fit is completely through and I have the end of my Chinese finger trap material here poking out. That's where my berry goes. And this is the last step of the process. So the last thing that you do is you get your, your tag in, your berry, you get it in that Chinese finger trap material. Just feed it down there a few inches. And what that's going to do is allow me to pull this all the way through. So then you just start pulling it through. Once it comes all the way through, you got it all the way down to that locked Brummel. See that? The tag in, the berry is all the way through the center. Then you can pull your fit off and you've got that nice tapered end coming all the way through and exiting right here, the last step is to just milk it down to where it totally disappears inside the main line. See that? It's perfect. Set it in there, and now you've got a nice tapered, you can just barely see where it ends, right there. That's perfect.
See that? That is absolutely perfect. Now you have made the first step to your locked Brummel. Now you just repeat that on the other side. I'm going to do the other side a little bit faster. Okay, I'm not going to talk quite as much, but you get the idea. You could actually end the video right here, repeat it on this, on this end, hook it up to your, to your climbing stick, and you'd be good to go. But I'm going to go ahead and, and keep doing it for you. Measure my eight inches, got it, and come down another couple. So there's my eight inch berry. I want my loop to be right about there. So I'm gonna fluff that up, bada bing, bada boom. Pass my fid through. Check my loop, Let's double check everything, make sure still about eight inches, yep. And then, so this is actually the hardest part is getting this, uh, you have to pass, now you have to pass this end, which is your main line, through this berry. So I'm gonna do that right now. It, it's the same process, it's just a little bit harder because now you've already got that big loop on one end. So the way I like to do this is go ahead and use this one for that. A lot of times I'll just make a big hole to start out with. Can you see that? Perfect hole right through there. And then you just use your other fid because it's just a little easier. You gotta come here and you gotta get your other line through there. See how easy that is? Gosh, this fid is awesome. You gotta make one of these fids. And then you just pull it through. Just take your time, make sure it's right. And once it's done, you can release your, release your fid. And then there you go, you got that figure eight again. A figure eight from your main line and then it's gonna lock in. And now she's locked. So now, there is your 18 inch aider. It's basically complete. Last thing you have to do is bury it again. So we're gonna make that same, well first let's go ahead and trim our, let's make our, make our taper here. So I'm gonna grab these individual strands. I'm gonna grab two of them. One, and I'm just gonna flip it over to the opposite side. One, two. So I pulled out two there. And I'm gonna come up here and pull two more, about midway up. One. One, two. So now I've got four strands, okay? I'm gonna cut those again. And this doesn't have to be perfect, guys. This is just, doesn't have to look like a arts and craft project for a grade. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the last one here. I'm just gonna pull one more. There we go. Got that beautiful tapered end now. So it's all ready and I can do my berry. So remember, you gotta measure where your berry is gonna end. So right about there, come down another couple of inches, do your fluff up. Now you're just using that as a guide so now I can come back and know exactly where I gotta terminate, where exactly I gotta terminate that berry. So come up here right close to the top of this berry Pass my fid down through. And 
and I made it to my fluffed up spot. So pull that through, leave enough for your, get this in there, just clean it up. Okay, once that's through, pull her back down through, get that berry in there. Okay, you got it all in there. Give that a nice tug. Make sure that's all the way seated down in there. And then you just milk, milk the main line back over again and it'll just disappear. And you're done. Now you've got a full length, some people call this a dog bone, two, two lock brummels on the end. Beautiful. You can see those berries both end up right there, the exact same spot. It's nice and strong. And I'll show you what that looks like on a stick. So I'm gonna use these on the tethered one sticks, but you could use them on, you know, really any stick you want. Just, you may have to change the way you make it a little bit, but uh, regardless, this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna show you guys how, to, how I'm doing it. Right here on the end of the stick, just gonna pass this up through. And then I'm just gonna girth hitch this loop. It's not even a true girth hitch, but you got this little tab, this little knob on the end of the one stick that happens to work perfectly for this. So it's almost like they designed it that way. Hmm. Just gonna pass that around that little knob, tighten her down. She is hooked. She is on there. That is not coming off unless I take it off. Same thing for the other one. Just pass it up through. Loop that over. Give her a good setting. Okay. Now, you have got an 18 inch fixed loop. Use this as an aider. And then to store it, just kind of reach up and pull it over the top. That's how I plan to store mine, just kind of popped up over the top of the, uh, of the stick. You can see here I've got two of them like that. So the idea is you just pop them up over the stick and then you, then you don't lose any kind of, you can still stack your sticks using the stacking pins, et cetera. You don't lose, you don't lose any of the functionality of the sticks when you do it that way. So that's how mine are gonna live. And then on my, uh, my other sticks, I use a longer aider. So I could always add more if I wanted to, but that's it. That's how you make an aider, guys. Nice, single, single step aider. This is, was a hold of Jeep, super crazy strong, rot resistant, mildew resistant, UV resistant. Pretty much no downsides to Am Steel, working with Am Steel. So hopefully that helped and you guys can make some gear. I always say hunters should make more gear because it keeps you engaged in the hunting process throughout the entire season. So make some of your own gear, have fun with it, just be safe, test everything, and make sure you're doing it appropriately and correctly. And don't take, don't take idiots like me, do not take our word for it. Verify everything is true and, and right before you go out and you know trust your life to this stuff. There you go. Hope that helped.